for next Monday, uh, so consider a spring with the const uh, spring constant k, a mass m at the end. So this is the spring. This is a, a side wall. And uh, the mass is sub subject to a drag force, Fv, proportional minus the velocity, and uh, a driving force, Fd, that is periodical. So it's similar to, to the two problems we solve uh, uh, on Wednesday, but they are combined. So you have both. A, 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 so it's an harmonic oscillator that is both driven by an external force and also drag by some friction, OK? So as I said, we, we solve the two problems independently. And as an exercise, we solve together. <coughs> On Monday, we put them together and we find the solution, OK? So that was for the, and then uh, number two. So consider two, two masses. So consider two masses, uh, OK? So I guess uh, you can take them uh, equal to masses with two equal masses, M, and uh, connected to each other uh, and to the side walls by three springs. So connected to each other and uh, to two walls by three springs, OK? So it's, it's something like this. No. So you have uh, the two side walls, three springs, and two masses, OK? So find the most general solution for the positions of the masses as a function of time. And then, uh, what are the normal coordinates? What? Well, you don't know yet what that is, but it's what we are going to do today. So, what are the normal coordinates and normal modes? And three, two pendulums or penduli, I don't know, of equal masses and lengths are connected by a spiral spring. They move in a plane, OK? And the coupling is weak. Find the motion with, meaning the, the trajectories, with, the, uh, with small amplitudes, OK? So here is, you have two. Uh, penduli, and they are connected by a spring, OK? So call the spring constant k. They have the same length, uh, the same mass, OK? 
fg and you do you have to find the solution that the position of this mass and this mass um, so called this one and two as a function of time okay so those are and I also uh, so these are the three problems plus the one I gave you on the uh, quadratic potential in uh, in the central force problem uh, and we saw them on Monday did you You got this one? Can I erase this? Not this. Not even the first one. Okay, then we wait. Ask if you don't, if you can read my handwriting, ask me. So I, I do the translation <laughs> where, where it's not clear. This, find the most general solution for the positions of the masses. <coughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> where? Ah? Consider two masses and consider two masses M, so the same mass, connected to each other and to the two walls by three springs. Okay, but you don't need, I, I, do, I did the drawing, so uh, this, this describes by words what I draw here. You have two walls and three springs and in between you have, uh, you have two masses. And I guess you can take, uh, let's see. And, and, and uh, okay, they have the same spring constant, just to make your life easier. And mine too. <laughs> uh, okay, so, okay. So really, all you need are, are the pictures. Right? So here I want x1 of t, x2 of t, or theta1 of t, depending on what you take as your generalized coordinate. Uh, connected by a spiral spring. Okay, this is by a spring. That's this thing here. Find the most general solution for the positions of the masses. What are the normal coordinates and normal modes? Now, you don't know what that, what maybe you do, but I haven't told you yet what these two normal coordinates and modes are, but uh, clearly this is what I hope if, we, if you finish copying this, this is going to be explained today. <laughs> This we cut, I guess, or are you, are you recording it? Just, I don't think it's very, yeah. And also this uh, one over R square, you, is that what you are asking? No, no. <laughs> so, sorry. No, no, wait, wait, it's not equi completely equivalent to, yeah, to what? To spherical? No, it's not equivalent, so we can solve it, but it's Yes, so these are all uh, harmonic oscillators, mm -hmm. but they are coupled. Okay, That's so the trick. Essentially, we can't uh, use a harmonic oscillator because we have to add a lot of connections. And the question, how we can use a Um, 
uh, no, I mean, uh, what predictions? I mean, you just, uh, these are harmonic oscillators, just they are coupled. And uh, that's what I'm going to explain uh, today. So how you deal with uh, a bunch of harmonic oscillators that are coupled. Then if you, are, if you, if you solve that, you have the, the trajectories and uh, is that? No, then I didn't understand, <laughs> sorry. Yes. If you have any situation, you can start with the harmonic Correct. Okay. So if our system is okay, the harmonic oscillator is not good, a lot of corrections. So it's a lot of corrections. Corrections. So it's not really an harmonic oscillator. Yes. Okay. So in this situation, we can't exactly use the harmonic oscillator equation. Plus some perturbation. No, I mean, you, you, you know the solution, the unperturbated solution, mm -hmm. and then uh, you, you do the perturbation and see how that is different. So if you have the free solution that is uh, a periodic motion, mm -hmm. then you, if you have some perturbation, as long as the perturbation is small, it's going to be more or less the same solution, but a little different. No, not any system. All systems that for which the, the difference with respect to the harmonic oscillator is sufficiently small that you can treat it as a perturbation. Because that's my question. Yeah. It's not, it's well, no, then uh, it's a different problem. Yes, it's different, but we can use the harmonic oscillator. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, if it's completely. The no, because if it's so different, I, the, the zero order approximation is not the harmonic oscillator. So then you have to start. So if it's so different, uh, it's going to be a completely different solution. Can I, are we, no? You want to ask me what? Two penduli of equal masses and lengths are connected by a spring. Oh, come on, guys, I mean. Just draw the picture and, uh, and uh, it's obvious what the question is, right? I think you don't need to copy what I wrote. <laughs> I mean, you have the picture, so. The drawing tells you what uh, you're supposed to find out. Okay, come on. So already from, from these problems, you, you see what the next step is, right? We discuss uh, the harmonic oscillator, then we sort of generalize that solution when you had drag drag, frictions, whatever. Then when you drive the harmonic oscillator with an external force, and we, we study the case like this one, in which is a periodic. Uh, and uh, uh, now the next question is uh, maybe you have a system that, so these were just sort to speak one dimensional problem, right? Uh, you, you, we only had one generalized coordinate. What happens if you have a more complicated system, like this one or that one, in which you have more degrees of freedom, more degrees, <coughs> degrees of freedom, but still uh, the, the potential is anyway some sort of uh, uh, com complicated but harmonic oscillator-like potential. So the nice thing is that uh, because the differential equations uh, that these kind of systems uh, give rise are still of the kind we discussed, that is uh, a, a differential, uh, ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients, right? So we still know how to solve them. The difference is that it's not going to be a single equation. Unfortunately, it's going to be a system of equations, right? So a little bit more complicated, but still within the the the, the 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 range of uh, w of the equations for which we know the exact solution so let's see how this works um
uh, you understand that there are many physical systems that are well approximated by this kind of uh, uh, toy toy models are called right because it's like what a little kid would do for for instance uh, the the atomic structure of of matter right is to a good degree of approximation well described by a bunch of atoms near their uh, equilibrium positions and when they move away from this position they are interacting with the potentials due to all the other atoms and you understand that to a good approximation that is like the one we described I mean it's pulled back to the equilibrium position by a force that is proportional to the amount by which this the single atom has moved away from the equilibrium position so you are back to a sort of harmonic oscillator the difference that uh, is not moving just uh, on a line it can move in space so you have sort of three differential equations coupled but still they are of the form that we discussed so what 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 that means we wrote the Lagrangian for the single uh, uh, particle uh, in a harmonic oscillator like potential right that is attracted by or, or repulsed by a force that is proportional to displacement it's easy to generalize this situation it, that what what changes is that your potential you remember we uh, everything everything started from writing uh, our potential uh, uh, sort of uh, near the equilibrium point right uh, uh, minus k over 2 that was the uh, one half the second derivative uh, of this potential the displacement uh, right something like this plus uh, so doing the Taylor expansion yeah so you see that th we did it uh, on, on Wednesday for one generalized coordinate but I, I can easily think of the potential as a function of n generalized coordinate say q1 qn right and then all I have to do is to uh, expand about uh, a, an equilibrium position that uh, I identify by, I don't know, Q0, 1, Q0, 2, Q0, N. So this is uh, the equilibrium position. Then uh, you have a bunch of partial derivatives, uh, first partial derivatives, but because of the definition that this is uh, an equilibrium point, they vanish. Uh, and so you have... Uh, a one half uh, what well you have not you don't have uh, just a single constant because now here you have uh, derivative of your potential uh, say i and j right you have uh, so you call this k i j and you have a matrix of this because depending in which direction you move you have a, 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 a force pulling you back to that position and that proportionally to uh, uh, the q i minus q dot i q j q z j plus higher order all right i mean i'm just generalizing what we did on wednesday to to a, a system that has n degrees of freedom so you see that uh, in general what i can do is to write my lagrangian uh, and uh, my Lagrangian so I, I have uh, some masses and the masses too uh, your system in general may, may have a, a different mass in a different direction right because the mass is sort of the inertia that your system has uh, it may be different in one direction or in the other so masses too you can think of them as matrices right and if I call uh, uh, my generalized coordinate x, uh, let me do, so you have a sort of velocity that is a, a, a matrix as well. And then I have that uh, potential, right, that is going to be uh, ki, kj, uh, sorry, k, uh, kij, that matrix. Uh, so I call this xi this xj that is the amount of the displacement from the equilibrium position and and this is the generalization of what uh, so in 1d we had uh, m x dot square minus 1 ha k half x square right now in n dimensions or with uh, n so this was one degree of freedom with n degrees of freedom the generalization is this 
uh, because of the definition, these are matrices, okay, uh, and they are symmetric. That means that MIK is equal to MKI. And KIJ, again, is symmetric too. So they are symmetric matrices, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now I, I just do what I did uh, for the one-dimensional case, and I, I write my Lagrange equations, right? Uh, and I'm going to have many because I have many n, in fact, uh, uh, degrees of freedom. But uh, each of these equations, so how, how do they look? I take the, the usual, so okay, let's do it. dl dx dot, right, uh, let's say i, so I take the derivative with respect to the i velocity, so I get this, whatever is, is, is here, right? So I get m i k, these are constant, x dot k, right? Remember the, remember the Einstein, I'm using the Einstein, uh, so maybe I should write here a sum a k, sum a k. So here I have a sum over k. Re remember that uh, if you repeat indices, we agree, that means that I'm summing over those indices, okay? Did you, do you remember this? So if I write this, means that I'm summing over k. And I still have a free index, and that matches this one. That's a something that you must, I mean, as, as you deal with tensors, that is matrices, always you have to check that indices, free indices, must match from the left-hand side to, with the right-hand side. Otherwise, there is a mistake. You see, here I have a free index, and here I have a free index. K, it doesn't count because it's sum. In fact, I can change the name of K, right? I can call it uh, J. It will be exactly the same thing, okay? K? Ah, uh, 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 yeah, you're right. Sorry. Well, actually, let, let's do it. That is, uh, uh, I, I like K better than J. But, okay, you are right. I mean, if... Yes, sorry. Thank you. So that's the, the first, uh, um, and then dl dxk, so the partial derivative of your Lagrangian with respect to the k coordinates. Uh, you see that uh, you only have here the, the k, so it just gives you these terms here, that is k uh, i, um, uh, I'm uh, sorry, I'm taking the i, so I should take a i here. So k i k x k, right? And again, I have a sum over k. So what happened to the one half factor? So you, you may ask, or it's obvious that uh, I did the right thing. Because this is a symmetric matrix. Right, so first uh, you hit one, you, you are going to have the i component first here, but then half the other half of the matrix has the same component there, so you get it twice. So that takes care of the two that uh, is gone. If you may have a, you know, before you wonder about that on Sunday evening. And uh, the, like, the equation, I just take the, the second, the, 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 the time derivative of this term, and I get finally my uh, Lagrange equation. So they are just mik, then I hit this with uh, the time derivative, so I get two Newton dots. And the Lagrangian, right, uh, is this minus this partial derivative, so this minus become a plus. <coughs> Actually, this k should be, uh, I mean, equal to zero. Where I, right, this, uh, so you, you have, this is one equation, and you have I's of this, where I is one, two, I don't know, S or N, the number of uh, uh, 
uh, uh, generalized coordinates. So as I said, this is a set, a system of S. So this S is equal to the number of degree of freedoms. So this is a system, one for each uh, degree of freedom. And, but you see they are all, these are constant coefficients. So you see they are ordinary differential equations uh, with constant coefficients. And you know that there is a, a general technique to solve this kind of, of problems. That is just a slight generalization of what we have done uh, for the case of, uh, of the one dimensional. That, of course, is included here. If i is equal to 1, you have only one equation here. And we are back to our one dimensional example of Wednesday. All right? So let's see how we solve this. Well, we solve it the same way we, we solve it. Uh, uh, so I take uh, my solution x uh, of k to be uh, uh, this uh, 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 an exponential, right, with some amplitude that I call big A of k, and then some exponential of, uh, of, uh, of a given uh, frequency. Uh, Omega, and then the, the problem, uh, you see, uh, is the usual uh, uh, things that uh, when you put, plug this in, what is a differential equation becomes by magic uh, a, a algebraical equation, right? This is the idea that Fourier had, uh, and we are still banking. We are still banking on uh, Fourier ideas because uh, a lot of differential equations are solved by this trick that is. This is the, the, the simplest form of Fourier transform, right? And uh, it's a very neat trick because uh, we know how to solve algebraical equations much better than we know how to solve differential equations. So if you connect the two, then uh, uh, it's a great idea, no? If, if, if you had the, OK. So I take this solution. I substitute the solution in my differential equation. And what I get for this equation, I get, right, I, I, I take the second time derivatives of, of this, all right? So here I, I have a minus omega square, right? Minus because I have the imaginary unit. Uh, uh, this, this, uh, this matrix, mik, this mass matrix, plus here I don't have anything. I just have this constant that I call, I mean, these are so like the spring constants of this system, k sub i k, OK? And you see, then uh, the derivative of the exponential gives you back the exponential. So uh, essentially, you have the a k uh, equal to 0, right? Because this, this is never equal to 0, so I can simplify it. Uh, are we all on the same page, or yes? OK. So as I, as I said, uh, from a differential equation uh, 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 through this neat trick, I get uh, an algebraical equation that, uh, however, I, I have to solve. And uh, you see it's a system, right? Because I have i, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it goes like this. Now, what is the condition? So you, this has to, to give you 0, right? Uh, and the, the unknowns are these frequencies. And uh, what is the condition for a system like this? to uh, give you 0 is the condition that uh, the, this, uh, uh, if you want, the, the eigenvectors are not linearly independent, or in other words, that the determinant did vanishes, right? That's the condition uh, for, for, for the vanishing of this. So a non-zero non solution for this system, OK? There is also the, the trivial zero solution. Implies that the determinant of this quantity, so the determinant of, uh, <coughs> well, let me write it in the other, just uh, the sign it is immaterial, vanishes. So from your linear algebra, you know this. So if you want to solve this, the condition is simply that the determinant 
must vanish. And the, the, you see, now you have an equation in omega square, right? Because you, these are matrices. You take the determinant, right? It's going to be a characteristic equation of a degree that uh, depends on how big these matrices are, are, therefore by the number depends on the number of degrees of freedom, then you solve that, you find the, uh, the, the roots of those, and those are the characteristic frequencies that are going to give you the solution. And that, yeah. The omega? No, the omega does not depend. It de well, it depends on, uh, uh, okay, it depends on K, yeah. In, in a sense that, the, you know, if you have, well, you'll see in a second. When, when we do an example, it, it will be, become clear. Then the, the general solution is going to be a superposition of these solutions for each of these di different omegas. So you are going to have as many omega as the solution of this equation. And that depends, if you wish, on, the, on how many of these things you have. Then the general solution, the general solution, you can write it as a superposition so you have, uh, maybe I write it this way, that uh, uh, so you have this, this amplitude A of K, and each of those depends on, on, on an omega, okay, and a solution that I call like this. And so I call omega of alpha the, the alpha solutions of this system, and therefore each of those has uh, the, the, the f as a function of time, this exponential, and you have alpha of those. Okay. This is the another nice things, right? That uh, uh, the uh, this this kind of systems are called linear because uh, uh, the general solution is just a superposition of uh, the individual solutions. That's a nice property of linear systems uh, uh, that if you have two solutions. The sum of those two solutions is again a solution. This is not always true. I mean, uh, it's always true for systems described by linear uh, differential equation. Okay. If you have uh, this solution, so now this is the general solution. Now it may be a little bit uh, cloudy at this point, but uh, in a second I will work out a, a, an example that uh, makes things a little uh, clearer. I just want to write the general solution for a general problem so that we, we, we know. You see, this is the general solution, but uh, in, uh, it's not very handy because you have a solution in which uh, you have pieces oscillating with different frequencies, right? As many frequencies as the number of degrees of freedom. Okay, so that's, that's a solution, no, no question about that. But it's a, it's a weird superposition, and uh, clearly you can uh, uh, solve the problem in using new core. You can do a, a coordinate transformation in such a, so you go from this xk to new coordinates that I call uh, theta, I don't know, alpha, where alpha uh, 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 reminds you of the fact that uh, I want coordinates each of each of uh, each coordinate of, uh, is such that uh, the solution in that coordinate moves with a single frequency. That means that in this coordinate, the equation of motions are not like this. Are, they are not like this, but they are each like this, right? This is always possible, you understand, because uh, uh, if you remember uh, uh, your uh, linear algebra, I can always find uh, uh, what is called the diagonalization of these matrices, right? You diagonalize the matrix. You know about that. You, you have done that in quantum mechanics all the day, right? You, the, all you do is diagonalize in matrices, I guess. And uh, you see that if you, if you diagonalize these two matrices, through some rotation that is a change of variables, then uh, this system 
the, the couples, right? Because you don't have cr crossing between different coordinates because by definition the matrix is diagonal. So each coordinate talks only to itself. And that means that this set of, uh, of differential equations that are coupled become a, a, a set of, uh, you know, alpha going from 1 to s of decoupled differential equation that the each of which is just an harmonic oscillator with that particular frequency. You see the beauty of this. You start out with a system that is all interconnected and assumingly very complicated. But your linear algebra guarantees you that if this is the case, you can always change these coordinates to a new coordinate that I call big theta here in such a way that each of them is, doesn't see the others. And it's oscillate like a happily uncoupled harmonic oscillator. Now these coordinates are the normal coordinates that I normal <coughs> okay that uh, I refer in the problem. So actually, every time you have systems like this, the, the, the usual problem asks you to find the normal coordinates. So to find the transformation from the, uh, your generalized coordinates x to this new set of generalized coordinates that you identify to be the normal coordinate. This is a very powerful thing because, you see, it's highly non-trivial because you are, you are not diagonalizing just one matrix. You are simultaneously diagonalizing the kinetic term and the potential term. So if this is possible, you can write your system as simply a sum of independent harmonic oscillators. So the problem then is, just, you know, yes. No. It's KIK, so in general it's not. If it's diagonal, I, I will write it like this. You know this symbol, the Kronecker symbol. Do you or you do not? You, you do? Do you? This, this symbol, what is it? And it is a matrix that is zero everywhere except on the diagonal. So if this is diagonal, then I can write it like this as a constant. But I didn't do it. OK, so may, let, let's see an example, so maybe it becomes clearer. Uh, so first a, a purely mathematical example, and then we, we address a physical problem with this technique. So I just write a, 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 an example of a, of a, a system of differential equations, right, with constant coefficients. Let's say, let, let, let's study the next to the simplest one, right? So the simplest one is the one we discussed on Wednesday, where I only had one coordinate. So this was a peculiar matrix with only one, uh, one by one matrix. Let's uh, do, so for instance, 2x uh, double dot, plus omega square. So I call, I, I, I already uh, <coughs> normalize everything, okay, in such that uh, I ha only have and to a so this, so the, the M I had here, for instance, uh, 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 okay, it's a very simple case in which the M's were all equal and the K's were all equal. So I divide and, multi and I call uh, this uh, omega is just the square root of uh, K over M. Okay, so this is the simplest. I took a matrix here, uh, but the M's are all equal and the K's are all equal. And you see, this is, uh, okay, it's just a mathematical problem. So how do we, how do we solve this uh, system? Well, as I said, uh, 
I plug in a, a, a test solution, right? And I, I have x, so I, I call my x, I don't know, a e to the i uh, alpha. Remember, I wrote the xk was some amplitude uh, depending, e to the same uh, frequency. So y is going to be, I don't know, b, because the, uh, the, the amplitude may be different, but I put the same frequency of the motion, right? In fact, you can write this as a vector, so this should uh, resonate with your linear algebra uh, that uh, you solve this by, I mean, really the solution is a vector, right? Uh, a vector uh, that is in this form. But, uh, well, I don't know, some students prefer to think of this as a vector, some like this is exactly the same thing, obviously. So if I take this and I plug in, in my differential equations, you see that I get 2a. Now here I have uh, two uh, uh, derivatives, so I get minus alpha square, as I was getting this, uh, plus 5 omega square a, because I have x, uh, minus 3 omega square b, because I have uh, y, everything is multiplied by e to the i alpha t. I can drop that, and I get 0, right? And by the same token, I can uh, 2, now I get b minus alpha square uh, plus 5 omega square b minus 3 omega square uh, a equal to 0. So again, the, this nice Fourier trick, I trade in a differential equation for an algebraical one, and now this I can solve, right? I can solve it, and maybe let's put it in this form here again. You see, this is a matrix. This is a matrix with this entry, right? Uh, with uh, uh, minus 2 alpha square. So I, I, I want to look at the A. So plus 5 omega square. Then I have a, a single entry minus 3 omega square b. So you see, I want to write this in this form so that it becomes clear uh, or clearer what I'm doing. So here I want the coefficient of a, and then b has th those two terms. Right? So these two are completely equivalent. I just, uh, if, I, if I do this, this pro the product of this matrix by this vector, uh, I get exactly the first equation. If I do this by the same vector, I get the second equation, right? You remember how to multiply matrices. It's a weird thing, you, you know, I mean, but uh, that's the way you, you have to do. And here you do the same, but this is just a one-dimensional matrix, also known as a vector. And again, uh, you know that, that for this to have a solution, you require, as we did in general, the, the, the determinant, uh, the determinant uh, of, this, uh, of this. So I take the determinant of this. So the determinant of this must vanish. OK? And. Uh, So what is the determinant of this? Well, you know that you have to multiply that minus the other one. So if you do that, uh, uh, well, I've, di I've done it for you. Uh, I get 4 alpha to the fourth, clearly, because you, you see you have this times this. Then you have the mixed terms that sum, they sum up to uh, 20 alpha square omega square. And, and then uh, you have a bunch of uh, 25 from here and then 9 uh, with the opposite sign, so 16. So 25 minus uh, 9 is 16 uh, omega to the fourth. So the vanishing of the determinant gives, you to this, gives rise to this characteristic equation. And uh, how many roots do you have? So uh, you... you uh, well, it's the fourth order, so in general, it's going to have uh, four roots. 
but you see it's a peculiar fourth order because only omega square enters, not omega. So you are going to have uh, two pair, two, uh, these four solutions are going to pair off uh, in uh, plus minus plus minus, right? Because they are all solutions. And in fact, if you, if you try, you see that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, what, what I'm doing, uh, uh, I have to, uh, yeah, I got confused with this omega square. I have to solve for, uh, for alpha. So again, it's the fourth order, but again, I mean, everything I said is true, but I switch it off. And uh, so I found alpha, I have, well, you see almost by inspection, you see if alpha is equal to omega, right, you get, you get omega everywhere to the fourth, and then you get, you see, minus 20 plus 4 is exactly 16. So plus minus omega is a solution, and the other one you can check is twice that. So the other two solutions are plus minus two omega. So uh, if, if alpha is equal to one of these values, then uh, you have a zero, that means you have solved your uh, equation. Therefore, your, your solution, you see you are, you are going to have two solutions, one for omega, uh, p for alpha, equal to plus of, or, uh, and the other one for alpha plus minus two omega. And how do you write those? Uh, as I said, you have a superposition of all those solutions and you can also find uh, uh, the values of A and B for each of them. And you know that this is, I mean, once you have the eigen vector, you can find the, once you have the eigen values, you can find the eigen vectors. And you do that by plugging this back, and it's easy to verify that, uh, you see, if, I, if you plug this solution uh, in your equation, right, then you see that uh, this leads to A equal to B to be true. While if you plug this one, you get uh, A equal to minus B. Do you see that? You see, it's plug, uh, plug uh, alpha equal to omega. You want to find the eigenvectors of this problem. So here I have omega square, right, minus omega square. Then you see that uh, you get, uh, uh, so omega square is everywhere. And here I have minus 2 plus 5, that is 3. So you have 3a minus 3b equal to 0. So for that to be a solution, you need a equal to b. Okay, so this way you find the, are you familiar with this thing of finding the, I hope so, because it's not my task to, to teach you that, just to remind you. But if you plug, if you plug the other solution, 2 omega, right, you, you plug 2 omega in here, so 2 square, this is 4, right? Then uh, you have 8 minus 8, right? You see, so then you get minus 3. So for that to be a solution, A must have the opposite sign of B. That is what I wrote there. Okay, this is the way. So the eigenvectors, so uh, of course, this uh, only tells you the, the relative uh, uh, weight of this. You have, you have always an overall coefficient that is free. This is going to be fixed by the normalization, but let's not worry. So this means that this, this eigen vector is, is A equal to B, so it's 1, 1. Then you have an overall that I don't care for the moment. And the other eigen vector is, is this one. Eigen vectors are important because they tell you how the system is going to move. Because when you write in terms of normal coordinates, those are going to be the eigen vectors. And you see, this, the first solution tells you that x and y moves in the same direction. So they oscillate like this or like this. I don't know how they are. And the other one is that the x and y oscillate in the opposite direction because the eigenvectors has opposite component. So that will, uh, is, is your key to the visualization, visual, well, I can say it, to vis visualize the, uh, the solution, uh, as, as we will see in a second. So. How does the general solution of this uh, mathematical problem 
look, look, look uh, well, this we, we already use it. So here I can write the solution. I can write it in this, uh, is a vector, so in this form. And as I said, uh, the solution is the superposition of all your solutions. So I have two solutions with some amplitude that I said is arbitrary. This is going to be fixed by some normalization. If you normalize the modes to have, I don't know, the sum of the square of the amplitude equal to 1, you fix this coefficient. Or you fix this coefficient by the initial conditions. Uh, and you see you have is in this form. This multiplies this omega t. But you also have the same eigen vector with the opposite frequency, because this is associated with both plus and minus omega. Plus, you have a solution with the other eigenvector, the one with the opposite sign. And they go like 2i omega t, and of course, minus 2i omega t. So this is the solution of this equation. If you wish, you have four. Uh, arbitrary constants that you can fix by fixing, for instance, the initial velocities and positions, or by normalizing them, or whatever. But this is the okay. Actually, you can make it a little more compact because. Because you know that these solutions better be real. So here you are not guaranteed that this is real, because it's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's a superposition of imaginary, well, complex uh, functions. So uh, you are not sure. So uh, actually, you can uh, require them to be real. And that actually sort of fixes two out of four of these constants, because you understand for these things to be real, uh, uh, you need that the sum of these two give you something real. So that means the, the, the uh, conjugate of A2 must be equal to A1. And similarly, uh, uh, you need that the, so I, I wrote twice three. I guess this must be a four, otherwise. Uh, and the conjugate of this, OK, so what I'm saying that A2 star must be equal to a1 and a4 star. So the conjugate of this must be, if this is true, you see that they two, they come, you see this is the conjugate. This is has the, so the overall is the conjugate. Therefore, is the real number plus the conjugate. This is the cosine, right? If you remember. So in other words, now I can write this. Uh, so let's call. Um, so uh, I have a1 is equal to a2. Uh, uh, conjugate. So this is uh, what uh, I can. Uh, uh, well, it's it's a complex number that I can call now b1 e to the phi one, right? If I give this name, then uh, these two combine nicely in a b1 one one. You see the cosine of omega theta plus this fa fa phase that I introduce. So this is a complex number in general uh, that I write in this form by using this, uh, how it's called, the uh, polar representation. And uh, because of this requirement that this is equal to the conjugate of that, OK, uh, then I can write it as a cosine. And similarly here, I can do the same. I, uh, I can call this uh, 1 half b th b b2 e to the i another phase, phase 2. I put a, a 1 half so that uh, I get only the cosine, b2, 1 minus 1 cosine. So uh, uh, the sum of these two is the general solution of this system. And I'm done. OK? So let's see now uh, an application.
Is this procedure clear or? So this was just a mathematical example, but uh, let's see. Uh, 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 so in, in, the, in the problems, in the homework, you, you have two more examples where you are supposed to apply this technique. And let's see how it works uh, in, a, in a physical context. So uh, I guess here I have a So usually, uh, as I said, if you think of uh, atoms, atoms are interacting, and they interact with the forces that look very much like springs, right? So the simple, think of the simple, non-trivial uh, uh, molecules, something like, for instance, uh, wa water, H2O, I guess, right? You know about this, right? the thing you, you drink. <laughs> Okay, this is a three atomic, right? Because there are three atoms, two hydrogen and one oxygen, and the oxygen is much heavier than the the, the hydrogen. So it looks like something like this. Actually, it doesn't look like this, but so you have the oxygen here, and then you have two hydrogens. Uh, uh, so I call the the mass of the hydrogen little m and the max mass of the oxygen uh, big m. Actually, it's not like this. Uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, it likes, likes to, to be some more like this, I think. Because uh, atoms, mo molecules always tend to minimize the energy, and that minimize the energy. But never mind, uh, this is just a configuration. Let's look at this problem that it somehow is inspired by, by, but there are other molecules that look my, like, like uh, well, never mind. Chemistry is not my, okay? And you see that uh, the force, of course the forces, uh, you don't have springs there in the, uh, you have sort of a, a electrostatic forces, right? But to a good approximation, uh, any motion, uh, so there, there must be some equilibrium position. Remember what we said about the potential. So here there is a complicated potential, that complicated potential that I wrote there. You have three coordinates. So it's a potential may be complicated. And it's certainly complicated if these, if these guys start pulling like crazy away, then you start feeling a very weird potential, right? But as long as they w behave, they well behave, so they move a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit down, and maybe. So they move a little bit away from the equilibrium position. is well described by an harmonic oscillator-like potential that in this picture I, I draw a spring, okay? Meaning it's a force that is proportional to the displacement. This seems to be a force that is very common. As long as you stick to position cl positions close enough to, to the equilibrium, right? So this is a general rule. I mean, if you are close to the equilibrium, you move away, there is a force pulling you back to that position. Because, uh, you know, it's like if you are all well organized, like in this class, if he starts moving, then uh, I, th th there is a force that is uh, somebody telling him, just go back, and he must go back. Because it is perturbating the entire system. This way you are at your ground state, right? But you start, you know, like kids, he runs there because he wants to talk to his friend. And then this is that no longer the minimum in energy, right? It's a higher state, and everything likes to go to the minimum of energy, especially the teacher. <laughs> so you see that this, this can be described by what we have said uh, uh, up to now, because if I write, so let's write the potential in this assumption. So let, let's make a, also the reasonable assumption that the force between this and this guy is essentially the same as this, this, and that the other guy. Then uh, if I call this, uh, say, x1, x2, and x3, by, by this I mean the, the the positions of, uh, of this uh, uh, okay so I want to make it really simple I really want 
So I don't want to study the case. I think maybe we, we in the, but so let's 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 just study the case in which they oscillate, but they remain they remain on a line. Okay, I want to make things easy, so that these are really coordinates, right? Because if I give you that, you know where this is. So you cannot move out from the blackboard, uh, neither in the plane of the blackboard. So then, under this assumption, uh, you see that I have a potential, right, that is just uh, the, the x2 minus x1. So the, and uh, maybe I put here also this rest position. So b is the, the distance at rest, at the minimum, right? And then x1, x2 there, and it's square. And uh, then I have the other. Please. Well, because uh, So I mean, I start counting, I don't know, from, so I have a common B. I mean, you can put it or not, it, it's up to, it, it's not going to change the equations of motion as I've told you 100 times. But, uh, so you want this distance, uh, you, you can have a B, you know, it, it's from where you start counting. But, okay, if you, if you feel uncomfortable, you can start counting from, from uh, Actually, okay, it's a little more, I want the, the rest position in a, in a way, right? I mean, because, so x1, x2 is this distance here, right? You start counting from here. Then they push back and forth, right? But there is a rest position that is when x and 2 are equal to b, there is no more potential. That's why I put the b, really. But again, since it's a constant, you can drop it. But you see why it's there? I mean, you have a spring. The, the, the force is proportionally, proportional to, to the displacement. But there is a position, a value of this displacement, for which the, the spring is at rest. It's not pulling any longer, right? And this is the value that I call b. If x2 minus x1 are such that this is b, I'm sorry, that, that this is b, then there is no force any longer. It's at rest, OK? You're familiar with the fact that spring is not pulling all the time. It pulls only if you pull, uh, if you pull away more than a certain uh, distance at rest. That is called, well, I call it here b. Yes, no. If no, just drop the b. If yes, keep the b. I mean, it's not going to change the equations. But physically, you want this potential to vanish for a value that is not x equal to zero, because that will mean that uh, they, they are just uh, zero distance in the spring. At a certain point, the spring is not working any longer, because it's a rest. There is no pull. Then you pull further, further and then it start working against uh, your pulling. But in fact, uh, we can get rid of that. Uh, let's just put it equal to. And also, you see that I, uh, I really want to. Uh, I really want uh, to change variables to some eta i such that uh, uh, well anyway if you put b equal to 0 then these are uh, these are uh, okay this way I guess So if you, uh, so if you if you write this potential now, it's going to be k over two. Then you simply expand, right? Uh, so it's going to have uh, x one square. Um, uh, 
uh, you see you have two twice x2, so 2x2 square plus x3 square minus the double product. Okay, and what is the kinetic energy of this system? Well, they are just uh, three particles. So this is the potential. The kinetic energy is just, uh, well, two, this, one, yeah. Ah, you were said. So it's just m divided by two, then x1 dot squ uh, uh, square plus x3 dot square, right? Plus you have uh, the oxygen that is the big guy, that is x dot 2 square. So here's the Lagrangian, right? And as you now, by now know, I mean, after you have the Lagrangian, then uh, you are in business because you don't have to worry about the intricacy of this system. You just write the differential equation. And what is the, uh, 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 the differential equation? But the differential equation is just uh, in the form that we wrote. Uh, is this time is going to be a matrix with how many components? So these are symmetric matrices. Uh, we have three by three, right? So it's, uh, it's a little more complicated than what we discussed uh, in the mathematical problem. It was a two by two, but uh, it's the next level in, uh, in complication. In fact, uh, 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 okay. If I, so you, you can write this, uh, 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 the, the Lagrange equations now. And if you do that, well, we, you get, uh, right, here second derivatives, second derivatives equal to those. But you can already plug in, uh, remember that uh, you, you only, only need, the, 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 to solve this problem, all you need is the determinant that I wrote in the general form like this, right? You only need to to find the the zero for this determinant, where the determinant was was of a matrix given by this k. And what are these k, i k, m i k? In this case, you see that they are what? For instance, the the m i k's. You see, m one one is m, right? M, okay. And this is big. So, so I can write this in what form? K, you see, you have this. This is the structure of the ma matrix in K. So the 1, 1 is K, right? K. OK. But the, the, you see, the 1, 1 is K minus omega square, the M1, 1, that is M, right? So this is the, so is it 3 by 3, the 1, 1 entry must be this one. What is the 1, 2 entry? The 1, 2 entry is, uh, uh, is not here because this is, uh, you see that it's diagonal, right? The kinetic energy is diagonal. You only have the 1, 1, the, uh, the 3, 3, and the 2, 2 element. But uh, you see that uh, the potential is not diagonal because there is some mixing between the, and in particular, you see that the, the I, I'm looking at the one, one, two is this one, so two, two, so it's just minus k. Okay, you see what I'm saying? I, I don't want to write everything, I just, uh, I know what I need, so I just extract from these two the form of the three by three matrix, and then I take the determinant. How about the one, three entry, so this entry here. As, as we said, the kinetic energy has no entry. The kinetic energy, we can write it immediately, is just a diagonal. Is one, one is m, right? Then, okay, but let's, uh, so what is one, three? Is there a one, three in the potential? No, there is no mixing between the coordinate one and three because there is only mixing between one, two and two, three. So here is a zero. About then the so this is what one 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 two one two again it cannot be in the kinetic energy that is diagonal so the one two must be here right 
two one, but the matrix is. So you don't have to compute this. You only need to compute half of the matrix. Uh, no. You extract it from here. It, you can read it off from here because. No, K. Uh, no, the same here. You can read it off here. Uh, no, but okay, but this is the potential. So you, you must. Okay, I see where you got confused. This is the potential, so I have to take the, the partial derivative. So I, I have killed the, the then the, the okay. So I, I effectively a factor of two that I'm splitting between these two terms. Okay. So I keep on going. So now we agree that uh, I only need to compute this half because this is going to be symmetric. For instance, if I have a zero here, I have a zero here. This, this, the the two two, <coughs> however, has. A, a component from the, the kinetic term, right, that is minus omega square big M, but it also has a component from here because of the potential that is just another K. But actually, you see, you have, because you have a 2, it's a 2K, right? How about this? This is 2, 3. So 2, 3, okay, no kinetic energy because it's diagonal, but I do have this term here. I do have this term here, okay, and this gives me a k, and immediately I can put it here by symmetry. So I'm left only with a 3, 3, no, 3, 3. I have a kinetic term, and I also have a 3, 3 here. So it, it's just equal, right, I mean, the, these two are completely symmetric, these two, so it's just equal to 1, 1. So this is the matrix uh, of which I take the determinant and uh, I put equal to zero. So are you all happy with this? Or if you are not, then no, I mean, seriously. <laughs> you take the Lagrangian, take the equation of Lagrange, okay, so that you see where all these tools uh, go, and then write from the equation of Lagrange and write the matrix. I skip the step because, I mean, you can guess the, what they look like because they're so simple uh, so that we can finish in, in time. Now, I, this is a, this is a, uh, so you know how to, how, you know how to compute this determinant, right? You, you, you go by line or you fix one and then uh, you take the determinant of the sub matrix or that I guess is called the minor or something and it's always clever to, to start from a line that has a zero, right, in a way, because that's the one <laughs> step less. If you do that, uh, uh, let's put it up here, uh, I guess you, you should get what I got, that is omega square key, k omega square little m times the, the cross product that is k big M plus 2m minus omega square big M m. Uh, equal to zero. So now I can erase, that's all the information I wanted, so I can erase this matrix that I, I, in fact, I don't need the potential any longer. And I guess I keep my little drawing. So what are the solution of this? So uh, uh, now actually it's omega I'm looking for, right? Uh, omega is my, uh, unknown, immediately you see that uh, uh, if omega is equal to zero, then you get zero. So the first root is omega equal to zero. The second root is if this term uh, vanishes, right? So let's call it the, that omega two. This to vanish, uh, I need the square root of k over m. And then if this last term vanishes, that is my third uh, root. Uh, this vanishes if, if you check if k over m, one plus two little m over big M. Uh, 
plus or minus because uh, yeah you're right um What, what's, I mean, this is a little odd, right? I mean, uh, frequency equal to zero. What, what does it mean? This is a periodic motion with zero frequency. I mean, it's, a, it's odd. But uh, you understand what that must correspond once we have written down the normal modes because you do have a, a solution in which this uh, molecule just moves uh, as a whole. So when in this kind of problems you find a zero frequency motion that corresponds to a translation so it's not a periodic motion in which uh, something is oscillating it's just th as a whole the center of the mass of your system is translating so we 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 will uh, so if, if you if you wish this is the center of a mass mo center of a mass motion and these are two frequencies instead that they that we are going to, to see. So, so this, uh, in a way, this is the solution. But I want to find the eigenvectors, as I did before, because the eigenvectors are going to tell me what I just told you. For instance, that uh, to this frequency, you expect three eigenvectors all pointing in the same direction, right? So that the motion is just a translation along that, that axis. So let's, let's try and find the eigenvectors, and then, then we stop. Uh, so how do I find the eigenvectors? Well, I, I have to plug in in my matrix, right? That was, you remember, k square minus omega uh, square m. But here I put a, a, a apex j because uh, I want to remember that this, this term multiply the eigenvectors, say, a1j, OK? So I take my matrix and I multiply by A, I call it A1, A2, A3, OK? But I have three of these, A1, A2, A3. So I need a, another index here to remi remind myself that this is the J A1. OK, they lo all look the same, but this is a 1 and this is a J. And this is a j, that means this is the vector, the eigenvector related to the eigenvalue omega j, that may be 1, 2, and 3. Yes? So I multiply, well, I don't know, maybe I should, uh, I shouldn't have uh, erased this. So maybe I, I had this matrix, right, 0. Uh, minus k, 2k minus omega square big M, minus k, uh, 0 minus, uh, no, uh, let's see, make it 0 minus k, um, k minus omega square M. OK, I had this matrix. How do I find the eigenvalues? Well, I call the, each eigenvalues, so I call this component A1, A2, A3, OK? So this is the eigen, but the eigen vectors depends on what eigen values I put there. So I call this eigen values one, two, three. I, I put a j, and therefore this is a j that carries to this, and this must give me zero. This is the way you find the eigen vectors. I'm sorry, <laughs> there is no shortcut. So now I'm writing the first, so I take this, I multiply, and I look for the 0. So I'm writing this. So I actually, I wrote only the first component. So now I write the second component. That is just minus k, a 2j. Then the third component is simple because it's 0 times something that is still 0. So this is 0. So if I solve this, when I plug in, for instance, omega 1, that is 0, I found a 1, a 2 for the 0. But I have to write also, uh, let me write also the, the second. Now I take the second. I have three equations. I take the second uh, uh, row, and I multiply by this column. OK? And if I do that, you see that I get minus k a 1 j, right, plus 2k minus omega j square 
big M times the A2J, and, and, uh, and uh, this time I also have minus K A3J equal to zero, okay? And now the last one, that <coughs> is minus K A2J, right? Plus K minus omega square J uh, little m A3J equal to zero, okay? So this is my system now. This I rewrote it only to explain what I was doing. Okay. So now let's uh, consider the eigen vector for the first eigen value. That is, I take omega equal to 1. Now, omega equal to 1 is 0. So you see, I have this equation in which uh, I think uh, this, this was a, a k, right? So essentially, what, what is this? So this is 0 in this case. Well, let's write it. I have, well, right, OK, thank you. So a 1, 1, because now j is equal to a to 1. And I can do the same here, right? And you see that uh, by the same token, a 3, 1 must also be equal to a to 1. So they are all equal. So this is the, the a, so, uh, OK, it's like 1, 1, 1. How about the? Uh, the, the second a game, uh, a game value that uh, if I plug here omega 2, you see omega 2 square is k over m. So k minus k over m times m, 0, that implies the a, a 2, 2 must be 0. Everybody, uh, do you agree? No, you don't agree. Why? Plug, plug, so um, now this is done. Now we are doing this. So plug omega 2 in here. So you get the square of omega 2, so you get k over m. k over m times m, k, k minus k, 0. So this is gone. The only way to satisfy this equation if this is equal to 0. So a2, 2 must be equal to 0. Clearly, the same is true here, because it's essentially the same. If I plug in, this goes to 0. And this is A22, two, two, so it's similarly satisfied. How, what happened, uh, so what happened to uh, what is A12 and A32? Well, this I can derive from here, because if I now plug in the solution, what do I get? Uh, no. Let's, let's do it. So now I have uh, minus k. Um, a12, right? No, plus 2k minus, let, let's do it. Uh, k over big M, so there is a 2 here, so it doesn't, times M, A22, T2 is 0, but minus k A32. So this means that, okay, this. I already, but then it's it's minus, okay? A, so this is gone, thanks to what I did before. Then I have minus k A12 minus k A32. So they must have the opposite sign. So A32 must be A minus A12. Finally, I can plug in the, the more complicated one, that is omega 3, OK? And uh, so if I do that, uh, you see that uh, um, well, we have to do it. So if I do the first one, you see that I get uh, uh, So 
So k minus km1 plus 2m m, big M, times M, right? So I get uh, K minus K, right? That simplifies. So this simplifies with this. Then I have K minus K is gone. Minus, so this is minus 2M, uh, big M. This is A13 minus K, uh, a two three. So this is one equation. And uh, from the one downstairs, I get something similar, right? Because now I decide that this combination is just minus two m. So I must get minus k a two three minus two m big m a three three must be equal to zero. So that's two equations, and I still have to. To, to to do something with the, the one in between. A two a a one three a two three okay a one two three a three three and uh, this one is a minus k a a one three then I have this other combination that is 2k uh, this times big M, right? Because uh, omega is still this. So this is a little different. I have to collect them. So I get uh, uh, plus, so minus k a 3, 3 plus two, uh, 2k is this thing. So I don't know, what is it? Um, so you see, this is, uh, so it's two, so this cancel, this cancel, so it's minus two is gone, right? Come on, don't, don't, don't give up now. Yes. We are almost <laughs> done. <laughs> So this is minus k big M over M, right, the first term, minus what? 2k. Then 2k, this is gone. So I have just minus k M, M, uh, M little m that multiplies this A2, 3. Okay, so... Now we can solve this system here, and we get the eigenvector, the last eigenvector. So these were the first two, and you see that this to be solved, well, a13 must be equal to a33. A1. <sighs> eh? What? Uh, no, why? You, you, you have to solve it. No, it's not obvious. It's symmetric, but uh, you see. Anyway, you see, if uh, take this, take this two, right? Uh, and actually, uh, if you change the sign and sum, right, then you see that A13 must be equal to A23. A, 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 A33, right, because you change sign. These two simplifies. Then you have this sum with the opposite sign. So A13 must be equal to A33. Then uh, you can plug it in here, right? So these two are equal, so you, you get uh, uh, the, their sum, and you get A23, A23, that is equal to uh, 1 over 2m, 1 plus 2m, m. Mm -hmm. So
So, what uh, did we learn? <laughs> well, I, now I can go back and confirm what I said before without proving it. That is, so now let's look at the modes, the normal mode that is described by this uh, coefficient for the first eigenvalues. You see, this is a mode in which your vectors, each component, are pointing in the same direction. So it's a motion like this. Right? And they have the same amplitude, right? There is an overall that I have to fix. But so as I said, this is a motion in which your uh, H2O simply translates in one direction or on the opposite direction. So this is the motion of the center of a mass. How about, so this is uh, not that interesting. How about the second eigenvalue? The second eigenvalue, uh, now I for, so this is the first. Se uh, the third is this. It has A22 that is 0 and A12 and A3 that are in the opposite direction. So what is this motion? So A22 corresponds to, to, to the motion of the big M. So that's 0, so it's not moving. And the other two guys, they are moving in the opposite direction. So this is the, the motion like this, right? So first motion is this. This is the motion like this. How about the, 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 the third one? The third one is similar, right? Uh, it is a motion, but it, you see here you had the minus, so it was in the opposite direction. The other motion is, is a little, uh, uh, so you have here the A3, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the A22 moves by a certain amount in a, in a direction. There is a sign that I don't. A13, A2. Uh, so this, I'm uh, sorry, this is minus 2. I, I made a mistake. So this is a motion that is like this. This is moving by a certain amount in this direction, and the other two moves in the opposite direction. Uh, by the same amount that is different from this one. So this is a motion a little bit here, and the other moves in the other. And you understand that it's like, uh, because this is heavier, this moves much less than the other two in the opposite direction in a certain, that is proportionally to the difference between uh, the two masses. So what are these? These are the normal modes. These are modes in which this uh, uh, water molecule is oscillating with a fixed frequencies. So these are not superposition. The general motion is a superposition of this. So in general, it will move like this because it's superposition. But this is a superposition of these three fundamental modes, we, one in which is moving like this, one in which is moving like this, and the other that, I mean, I cannot do it, that is moving a little bit like this and like that, OK? <laughs> and uh, so just to, to finish, uh, well, okay, you can maybe try yourself. So now you can go to the normal modes and uh, you know change your variables to the normal modes and see and see these eigenvectors uh, as they as they move. But okay, maybe you you do it in one of the exercises. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Really. Uh, uh, it's useful to solve problems of this. In fact, I, I gave you two problems, I guess, or three on this. And so Monday we, we do some more uh, on this kind of systems. Uh, but I hope uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, it's a very powerful technique, too, because it allows you to solve problems that, in principle, looks very complicated, right? I mean, a bunch of atoms oscillating in a different way different various ways. You can also make it more complicated if you allow them to move on the, on the blackboard plane, right, or even outside the, but oh, clearly this matrix becomes bigger and bigger and then you require some, some, uh, uh, some computers to, to do the things, but uh, okay.